Welcome back to the show. Today we're riding one of my new locals, Barrelwood Skate Park. It was just built a couple months ago and I found it on my way back from a Cape and Funk video where I spent 24 hours at a zoo. Today I'm feeling hyped. I got my lucky orange monster can in my hand. I've been drinking this thing for way too damn long. I need to stop, but I just can't. Today's episode is going to be a little different. I asked you guys some questions on Instagram on what I should talk about. That'll be the focus for today's video. Welcome to Cruise with Caper. We take the sexy hat off and we put the trusty helmet on the noggin. Got to stay safe and be a good representative of what you should be doing at the skate park. Even though the skate park looks deceptively small and simple, one fall can change your life. All right, we gotta do some uh, dad stretches and make some dad grunting sound effects. <laughs> Cause I'm a dad now. While I'm warming up, I'll answer the first question. This is from Nico Bramo. He said, why did you start scootering and YouTube? I started off riding skateboards, scooters, bikes, and rollerblades all around my neighborhood with my friends. And my dad was a skateboarder when he was really young. He used to shred the pools back in the day with Lords of Dogtown, if you guys have ever seen that OG movie. He was a surfer and he was a stud. So Corey and I got into skateboarding. When I went to the skate park for the first time, I dropped into a vert ramp. I got to shred and have a lot of fun. My mom and dad used to take me to Van's skate park when I was a young kid, a privately owned skate park with a vert ramp inside. My brother and I used to shred there all the time and that place closed down all of a sudden. So we had to find a new place. So we went to Cal Oaks skate park and that's when I saw Raymond Warner do a bri flip. I saw Kenny Owens and Jason Beggs, all the local pros riding. And I didn't even know this was a thing. So I went home and I did some research and I found this hidden community of scooter riders. And I've always ridden a scooter when I was younger. Any sort of action sports was fun. So I picked up the scoot and that's when it all began. The reason why Corey and I started YouTube was we're just two scooter riders looking for something to do other than just ride. So we wanted to document it. Tanner Fox was a huge catalyst to this idea and he's the one who inspired us to just begin. Now it's my new love and ambition and work life. And I'm so lucky to be here. After warming up at the skate park, I pull up to my favorite quarter pipe that has perfect coping to back lip on. What I mean by that is when I lock into my grind, there's no spots that throw me forward or catch the scooter. I just slide perfectly like butter across. So my first trick, I do a back lip to whip in, and I know that I'm going to be riding this thing the whole time. This session is going to heavily focus on back lip combos and tricks I can do in. On to the next Instagram question. So Melissa B0019 and a lot of other people are asking, how are you coping being a parent? The best way to describe being a parent, I feel like I unlock a new part of my heart and a new way to love. It's very selfless and there's more to work for than just me. I have my wife to work for and my son. I feel overwhelmingly happy. I, I, I feel driven. I feel like I have a new fire. Overall, being a parent has just been a blessing. I can't wait for the next kid, which will be soon to come. Not feeling good, not feeling too warmed up, so we gotta do a flip to get the blood flowing. So I flip, I almost fall on my face and I'm like, okay, I gotta land this. Since I'm a grown man on a scooter, it's a bit of an odd sight. Then when I flip, people start pulling out their phones because you know, it's a flip, it's, it's, it's impressive to some. When I'm going for my third flip attempt, I see in the left hand corner of my eye, this dad has his phone out ready to take a picture of me. After five minutes pass or so, he then says to me, he got a sick shot. So, you know, I got to check it out. So this dude should definitely shoot some photography because he nailed it and got it, the perfect shot of me flipping this hip. You want to email it to me? Oh, nice. That looks really good. <laughs> yeah, that looks oh, here. pretty good. That looks good. Could I get a, can you, can you airdrop on that phone? There, I'll let you do it. Okay, you sure? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Oh, sweet. There's airdrop. Boom. There I am. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I'll be posting on Instagram. Yeah, I, I thought it was awesome. I'm like, oh, cool. He's like, hey, he's doing good. Like, oh, okay, I'm going to picture that. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I seen you had your thing on. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you get very many people to, to do it for you, you know? No, that's awesome. Thanks yeah. for doing that. What's yeah. your name? Scott. Capron. Nice to meet you. Hey, same here. What's your name? Capron. Nice to meet you, Capron. I'll see you around. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, shout out to that dad. He's awesome. So I had this unique idea. I wanted to stall on the top of the rail. And then after doing that, I wanted to grind down and heal out. But let's answer another question. So Musical Megs and Austin V 73 both asked when the new merch is dropping. 
So my Cruise with Caper merch will be dropping sometime in May. But the hat you guys are talking about that you saw in the beginning, my Caperin brand merch will be dropping early May. So be on the lookout. I'll be announcing it very soon once I get the socks in. I had this random urge to board up the rail and then front right out. And we got a first tee and that got me juiced. For the next question, Nicole Towler asked Superfunk. I saw everyone asking so many questions about Superfunk. My boy, how we get the name? How is he? I'll be answering all that on the Funks channel, but I can just go over it real quick on here. This kid is amazing. It's so awesome to learn every little idiosyncrasy that he has as a human. His little winks, his little faces, the sounds he makes when he wakes up, when he's upset, how he cries, when he farts. Like every little detail is just so lovable. I'm just so lucky to have this little dude in my life and I can't wait to get back home and hang out with him and get him on a scooter too. That'll be coming soon, guys. Kai underscore Myers 15 asked, are you still sponsored by Apex? So the answer would be yes, but there's no sort of financial interest. Like Apex and I have the same interest. We're both interested in building the scooter community, help provide products that will stay strong and that won't break on you. So, I mean, it's my favorite scooter to ride. I've never liked anything else more than an Apex. And they know that I've been riding for them for a long time. But when I stopped riding professionally and competitively, and focus on YouTube. Um, I ended the contract with them because it didn't feel fair to me to get paid from Apex when YouTube became my main source of income. The best way to answer it is yes, I'm still sponsored. They sent me a new scooter and we're, uh, we're on a mutual agreement right now to support each other. Not underscore Ashley asked, at what age will you start teaching Super to ride a scooter? I want him to totally get a vibe check of the skate park and see if he likes it first because I'm not gonna force anything onto him. I want him to choose his path. I'll show him what I like. And if he likes too, awesome. If not, not a big deal. I can live with it. I'll have him cruise with me when he's able to, if he wants to. For my next trick, I'm gonna do a front board up the rail. This grind is much different than the backside grind I've been doing, where I can use my heels to balance. For this one, I need to be leaning forward. There's much more risk if I end up falling due to the way I'm balancing on the rail. So the idea is I wanna front board up the rail and then lock both my wheels in. Once I lock my wheels in, this helps me transfer my momentum into a 360. And I wanna do a couple tricks out of this. For my first trick, I go for a truck driver, which is a 360 bar spin. I end up falling and sliding out. This skate park is slippery and takes some adjustment. Boom, we get it second try, no problemo. For the next question, Pancho G asked, how to become a professional scooter rider? Just like anything in life, if you want to become a, a professional, and a professional meaning like you're a top tier, like you're the best that you can capably become at this craft that you want to become professional at, you need to be able to sacrifice a lot of things. You need to choose your time wisely if you want to become a professional anything. So as a scooter rider, I was at the skate park seven hours a day on average. I would spend my time filming edit, yeah. reaching out to companies. I would take time to heal. I would travel all over the place. I would drive for many hours to go ride different places places to be prepped and ready for competitions. I would be online talking to people on forums. I would be posting on YouTube. I would be spending every dollar I was making riding scooters to go ride scooters even more. If you want to become a professional, you need to commit. You need to marry the idea that you want to become a professional and do nothing but chase that idea. And that's what I think it takes to become a professional. And you just got just be obsessive. Be crazy about it. Some people will say, why are you doing this? Like, this is not who you are. But if that's what you want to do, th that person doesn't know who you are. I was so lucky to grow up with my mom and dad because I wouldn't be able to, to do what I'm doing today without their support. My mom helped travel for us. She created a business, sold scooter tees to make sure that we could afford to travel everywhere. And that was my jump start to my whole career path. So shout out to Mama and Papa Funk. Papa paid the bills and Mama helped the boys chase their dreams and goals. And I hope that I reflect that as a parent in the future. After taking a quick slam, I take a couple cute pictures of my scoop. There's a special art that goes into taking a picture of your scooter. And I did a great job here, I'd like to say. Now I'm going to get into some back lip combos, and this is where the trick battle of the day begins. I want to do a back lip to bri flip out. This is a very unnatural feeling trick. This trick is going to take a lot of precision and patience and getting in that perfect grind so I can bri flip out. 
After doing a back lip to tail whip, I knew I needed to add a double whip to that. And then following that, got to do a triple. And the best part about the back lip triple is I got it in a line. to my left and I see this woman training her dog. I could not help but look away because it reminded me of Nova, my old dog that I uh, ended up rehoming and giving to Redemption Road K9, which is a training camp for dogs. And the owner ended up keeping Nova to protect his ranch. So I ended up falling on my face <laughs> and I'm laughing to myself because that was just the silliest thing ever. Yeah. This is how the skate park is. One second where you're not focusing on what you're doing, you end up falling flat on your face. This is why you wanna wear your helmet because even myself, a pro, can fall on their face. I ended up telling the woman that uh, I fell on my face watching her train her dog. I thought that was such a quirky, funny moment. Let's answer some more questions. VG underscore 21 said, how did it feel winning Nitro Circus and how did you prepare for it mentally and physically? That was my biggest accomplishment in my scooter career. I landed a world's first. I landed a triple front flip. I was going against the best riders in the world. So mentally, I had to like hone on in. And you know what's so funny? That same day, I filmed an entire vlog an entire youtube video in the midst of prepping for that so to answer the question how did i prepare for it mentally i mean i was already prepped for it mentally because i was able to travel the world with my brother and film it for our youtube channel so i was set there to prepare for it physically i had to find a, a, a new trick to land an unfathomable trick that didn't seem possible. So that was the biggest challenge mentally was how do I find and physically overcome this impossible challenge, this trick that no one's ever done. Uh, that was the double backflip front bry. That that trick is the reason why I won that entire thing. The, the crazy part was, is I've never even gone for this trick before in my life. I'm pretty sure I ended up landing it first try. So that was the big challenge for it mentally and physically. And I was able to do it because of the training facilities Nitro provided. So thank you and shout out to Nitro for making that possible. After landing both the tricks I needed to win the competition, that's when I knew I was prepared mentally and physically to win Nitro World Games. Hope you guys enjoy my struggle to land this back lip right out, but let's answer another question. Okay, this is my favorite question out of all of them. I think it hits home and it's something I really don't believe in that we should be changing our, our mindset on. Wannabe Gamer YT said, also, how is life being a dad? Is it really as bad as my generation, I'm 16 now, thinks? I had the same assumption that raising a kid is this big, grueling process that's going to whip my ass. And yes, I'm, I'm not going to like it, but it's going to be tough. That I ended up getting the assumption that it's going to suck. But after meeting Rydell and her family, reading Stormy's book on it, Rydell's mom, on how to raise a kid, it really changed my perception. There's a lot of giving that is done, but you receive a lot in return unknowingly as you raise a child. And yes, there'll be times where it's hard on you physically and mentally, but that's when a diamond is made under pressure. So that's the best way to describe it. If you guys wanna have a kid, make sure you find the right partner who sees the world the same as you do, who has the same morals and wants the same outcome for your children. And then boom, you guys are set. That's the hardest challenge is finding the right person. If you end up in a situation where you can't control that outcome, then you just gotta roll with the punches and make the best out of your situation that you can. You gotta play the hands that you were dealt. And that always brings me back to holy crap i am lucky and thanks for this life i'm living guys so after doing around 20 attempts i get one foot on and this is where i start getting really frustrated and i'm like okay I, I, after getting foot on it i know i can land it I just, I just gotta lock it in perfectly for me to trick out On attempt 457, we land it. We're gonna call it there, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. There's gonna be some Cruise with Caper and merch dropping very soon. Hope you guys get it, hope you enjoy it. 
Very excited for that drop. And also this hat right here, guys, is part of the spring drop. I can't wait to release it. It's one of my favorite clothing lines I've ever created with our new designer. Very excited for the future. Cruise with Caper, man. man. That is just, this, this show is filling my heart. I'm feeling so happy to be doing this. It feels like a healthy outlet for me to get, get outside, be physical, sweat, and talk with you guys because it literally feels like therapy and chatting with you guys makes my day. So hope you enjoyed today's episode and have a good one. See ya.